indeed for joining me. I've um, got to talk about Rwanda first of all, of course. Um, that flight cancelled last minute. Seven people eventually were supposed to be on board, 130 originally. European Court of Human Rights basically said, ah, uh -uh, can't send people now. You need to wait for the High Court in England to have another look at this, possibly in a month's time. Um, did you ever expect that flight to take off? And are you glad it didn't take off? I think it's a mess. And let's go back to the stated aim of this policy, which is to deter the evil criminal gangs that are smuggling people and to deter people from risking their lives and, and getting in small boats across the channel. And on every one of those uh, measurements, the policy is failing to deter. We had 250 people arriving in small boats yesterday and 250 the day before that. So clearly the threat of being deported to Rwanda isn't deterring anyone. And that's what really matters here is, is the policy going to work according to the stated aims of Priti Patel and uh, Boris Johnson. And if it's not going to work, then we shouldn't be doing it. And we should be uh, also not uh, wasting £500,000 yeah. of taxpayers' money in the middle of a cost of living crisis uh, on a flight that didn't even take off. So let's actually get back to the bread and butter issues of what needs to be done, a proper security partnership with France, a proper returns agreement with the European Union, and processing the uh, asylum applications here in this country. I mean, that... 37,000 applica uh, asylum applicants in this country languishing in hotels, costing the taxpayer an eye-watering £4 million a day. Julia, so let's let's focus on the bread and butter issues rather than chasing headlines. I, I have to say, I think there will be an awful lot of people who would agree with you on that, except the small point that all of this is focused on, if we could just renegotiate and get, get around the table with France and deal with that and deal with the people smugglers and, and stop people from getting on those boats, we wouldn't have all these problems, have these safe routes. It all sounds well and good, but none of it's been happening. None of it is going to happen. France has made it really clear, despite being given tens of millions of our taxpayers' pounds, they're not going to police those beaches and stop people getting on those boats. People are always going to want to pay those people smugglers if they think they can get, end up staying here. And unless we make it clear... Once you get here, if you come here through an illegal route, you are not going to be able to stay here. We're never going to stop that. So it's all very well. Everything you said sounds great, but none of it's going to happen. So what is the alternative? Well, I'm afraid it's certainly not going to happen under this uh, prime minister and under this government. Do you think it's Boris Johnson's fault that the French won't stop people getting on boats in Calais? Well, the, the relationship between the Euro United Kingdom and the European Union has been burned. It's completely How, how has been it been burned, Stephen? Why is it in a well, bad state? Well, by ye years of, of a war of words. Uh, and, uh, hasn't it uh, been burned course, by the, the fact that the EU doesn't like the fact that the British people voted in a democratic uh, referendum to leave the EU? We're being punished by the EU for our democracy. I, the, the reality is we have got a broken relationship there. But we can talk for on hours, their hours, side. And hours about why... We can point the finger, we can play yeah, the Yeah, but we can. Macron I'm has been insulting about our in, Prime Minister. I'm, They've made threats to the EU. There's, there's threats to the UK. There's been no retaliation at all from the UK side. Boris Johnson has many faults. My God, you won't find anyone who's more critical of him on issues like Partygate and other things. But on this, he's not done... What, could you point to a single thing that he's done wrong other than enact Brexit, the will of the British people? Well, he is now trying to withdraw from an legally binding international agreement, the Northern Ireland Protocol. And so that's going to dominate the conversation between the UK and the EU going forward. What's that got to do, this, what has that got to do with Rwandan flights with Channel Migrants? Oh, come on, Julie. You know, this is politics. And if there is a massive battle going on over here about an issue over here, it's going to affect everything else in the relationship. That's how it works. That's how it's always worked. So we it's should we should accept I'm a punishment beating in... on Northern Ireland in terms of customs checks to punish us for for Brexit in return, uh, unle unless we're going to actually get the French to stop uh, allowing all those uh, those migrants to get on bickety boats and come to the UK. I mean that, 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 that you, I don't know if you do you really still think these people are our friends? Isn't it in the interests of of the Europeans and the UK and of these migrants who apparently are all terrible victims? that we stop this process. Why don't? Why doesn't the EU that you love so much, why doesn't the EU want to stop people getting on those boats and risking their lives in the channel? You know, what I really don't like is all this sort of punishment language, as if we're a victim. We're a we proud nation. Punished. We are a proud nation that stands up for British values and for the British people on the international stage. That does involve sometimes having conversations with other countries. 
there is politics in other countries. Those countries have got their own agendas and their own issues. And you're living in cloud cuckoo land if you don't think that's the case. So let's actually have a government that stands up and does its patriotic duty by standing up for our national interest, having the conversation that has to be had because there's something also called geography. Geography means that there is a lot of people in France who want to come to this country. If we want to solve the problem and stop them coming here, we've got to talk to the French. We have been talking to the, Fr the French. Right now. The French France literally, the, the, the EU and the French banned... Poor little Britain. Britain. We can't stand up for we ourselves. We can stand up for ourselves, but it would help it if we didn't have a Labour Party pulling me, us back. You. The EU literally banned Priti Patel from attending the last meeting to discuss this. My God, I mean, if that isn't an insult, I don't know what is. You say our patriotic duty. Shouldn't the duty of the British government be to the British people, first and foremost? And the British people have said, we don't want to have a whole load of random young men, largely. 90% of these people are young men between 18 and 40, turning up on our shores without ID, without passports. We don't know who they are or where they're from coming to this country. They're not desperate. They're coming from France. Patriotic duty of this uh, prime minister and this government is to look after the needs and the wants of the British people, isn't it? Yes, and doing your patriotic duty does mean talking to other countries because... We are We've done the talking. part, or last time I checked, part of the international community, and that's exactly what we're seeing now, that our uh, proximity to France uh, is uh, why we're having so many people coming across the channel. So if you want to solve the problem, you've got to talk. OK, well, to what the about talking to Rwanda? The UK, the UK had, had com the UK had conversations with Rwanda. They agreed they were going to send people to Rwanda. They're going to pay them large sums of our money uh, to take uh, uh, channel migrants as a deterrent uh, to people coming here. If you come here, you claim asylum, you're going to be shipped off to Rwanda to resettle there. Um, why is it such a problem? The, U the European uh, Court of Human Rights has approved for 30,000 Burundians to take a uh, 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 safe, you know, safe haven in Rwanda. If it's safe enough for Burundians, why isn't it safe enough for these channel migrants? Well, the big legal case that really matters, actually, is the one that's going to report back uh, next month, uh, which is broadly to say whether or not this policy is legal at all. And I think the difference between the British courts and the European courts is that the British courts trusted the Prime Minister to bring people back from Rwanda if the ruling in a month is uh, that the policy is illegal. The European court clearly doesn't trust the Prime Minister to do that. And, and let's face it, I would, I would kind of gently suggest that there's a mountain of evidence to suggest that we have a Prime Minister who pays no respect to the rule of law whatsoever and looks to break it whenever he possibly can. So uh, the reality is that's the, the difference between the courts and their rulings. I think it's a, it's a, we're, we're in a mess here because uh, Priti Patel has put a forward, forward a policy which isn't really about solving the problem. It's about chasing headlines and throwing stuff to the backbenchers so but that Boris Johnson can It's also to about exposing the hypocrisy on the Labour benches, which you say you want safe passage. You say we should be talking about it. We're not getting anywhere with the French and the Europeans. And it's been going on for years. Um, and you say you want safe passage for people and the like. Well, it's all very well, but how many people are we going to take? I mean, give me a number. I've yet to have any Labour uh, representative. Give me a number of how many people you'd be happy to take to this country because there are not just millions, there are billions of people on this planet who would have a right to claim asylum here on that basis. Well, the first thing is to, to clear the backlog in hotels. We've got 35,000 asylum seekers languishing in hotels in this country, thousands of them loyal to Where Britain and Afghans who, who stood up for the British forces uh, in Afghanistan for all those years. Uh, that's costing the taxpayer four okay, million. Yeah, it is. And we'll put them in homes, which other British people also want. And then what do we do? How many people you do? How many, give me a number. If you want to have safe passage for people to come to this country, not get on rickety boats, and we have it all legal, how many people? Well, we need to get them here legally, not on How many? boats. So that means a returns agreement with France, How which many? means that every single person that arrives on a small boat should be sent back France to France. France isn't going to do that. That's not, that's, that, that's, that's, that that's not going to happen. Stephen, that's not going to happen. I'm sure that there'll have to be a quid pro quo in that. You're, it's not going to happen. Gonna that deal. We're not it's gonna never going to happen. Without, uh, without some skin in the game. So How many people? So that's the mature dialogue that has to take place. That is when there's a Labour government that will sit down with the government of France, and with a 100, within 100 days of a Labour government, we will have a deal. You because, won't. I tell you why, the French don't want to deal with, with Boris Johnson. How many people? Because he's burned all the bridges. How many so people? That's the first thing. That will stop the illegals. How many people? We also, we, but we've got to do our bit. How we've many people? People fleeing violence and persecution How many people? The world. We have to do our bit, but we can save £4 million pounds Stephen, per day. Stephen. Stephen. How many the people hotel. would you accept into this country coming through on safe and legal routes and safe passage? How many people? 
You can't put a number on it, Julia, because you have to <laughs> no, have no, a no. deal. You, you can't put a number. Really annoyingly, we are out of time. Stephen, I could keep this going till 10 o'clock. Come back on soon. We are going to get to the bottom of this. Uh, Stephen uh, Kinnock is...